Blog Talk Radio. You have now entered Messiah of Israel Ministries Radio with Evangelist Zev Porat, broadcasting worldwide from Israel live stream. Zev is not ashamed of the gospel of Yeshua, Jesus, Romans 1 to 16, and does not compromise the word of God. If you are looking for the truth, you are in the right place. Now here is Zev Porat. Well, shalom from Israel. Greetings. And today we have with us our world-famous producer and co-host, Christina Micas, with us. Shalom, Christina. Shalom, Zev. Welcome and, and great to be back again today for another exciting teaching. And listeners, today, Zev is going to be teaching on the seven seals of the book of Revelation. The sealed book holding the hidden mysteries of God kept secret through the ages. We can read that through Daniel 12.4. In order for us to truly understand the book of Revelation and the end time prophecies, you really must understand the seven seals of the book of Revelation. So the Spirit of God is going to impart that knowledge to us today to get us on the right track to understanding the book of Revelation. And right now, listeners, I just want to direct you to uh, visit Zeb's website at www.messiahofisraelministries.org so that you can share in all that God is doing through Zev's ministry in Israel. And be sure to follow him on Facebook at facebook.com slash Messiah of Israel Ministries. And right here, let me just announce our upcoming show next week, Monday, March 24th where we're going to be talking about Zev's outreaches in Israel and the supernatural ways that God is moving. It's, it's really powerful, and you're really going to enjoy it, I know. And we're also going to talk about Operation Jericho and what's happening with that in Israel and the United States. But for now, I'm going to turn it back over to Zev so he can share the seven seals of Revelation with us. Zev? Well, shalom, shalom, listeners around the world. I bring you greetings from Israel, and today we have an exciting message, an end-time message, the seven seals. And before we get into our teaching, I would, I would really like to challenge you to love your Bible, to get into the Word of God. The Bible is God in a print form. You know, Yeshua was the Word. It says in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That word we know that dwelt among us is is Yeshua HaMashiach. So love Yeshua. Love your Bible. Love Yeshua. Get into the word. Study the Bible. That's what we're all about here in this radio broadcast. We want to challenge your thinking. We want you to run deeper into the word of God, to seek the true revelation through the Holy Spirit. Before we get into our teachings, I'm just going to read a few verses from the Old Old Testament and the New, New Testament. And we're talking Proverbs 30, verse 6. Do not add to his words, or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. And then, of course, Revelation 22, 19. And if anyone takes words away from the scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this scroll. So we are in the end time message right now, and go get your Bible ready, your pen, and take some notes. It's going to be an exciting revelation. In the Bible, we could read that God has a, has a book that's been sealed with seven seals, holding the seven hit, hidden mysteries of God, which were kept a secret through the ages. What is the significance of this book to us? as believers in Yeshua HaMashiach. The prophet Daniel of the Old Testament saw this book in his visions, but was asked to seal it up, to seal up the words of until the time of the end. The content of the book was also seen and heard by John in the book of Revelation, chapter 10. Unknown to many, these seven seals have already been loosed today, and the mysteries contained in them already have been open to the public. Yet only the bride, only the predestined people of God are qualified to understand these contents. 
of the book. It is hid from the unbeliever. Yeshua said it clearly. 11, verse 25. I thank thee, O Father, O Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and that has revealed them unto babes. Babes means believers that are are new, that are, are, are not grounded into the, the word. Even so, Father, for see, it, it seemed good in thy sight. So the reason why this book has been revealed today, why has this book been revealed today? The reason is to get the people ready for the second coming of the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. If your name is written in this book, you will surely seek the revelation of end time, and the call to dig on these mysteries to make your election calling sure. We're in the end times. We all want to make sure that we go up there in the air with the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. The seven-sealed book. The seven-sealed book is presented in Revelation 5, 1 to 7. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat, sat on the throne a book written within, and on its backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seven seals? And no man in heaven, no on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look on. And I wept. Because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look on. And one of the elders said to me, Weep not, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and loose the seven seals thereof. And behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it has been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. A this symbolize, this symbolizes, we can conclude 100% that there's, that is it's none other than our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, who is being referred to here as the Lamb, the root and the offspring of David and the line of the tribe of Judah, who took the book out from the Father's throne. It is Yeshua alone, Jesus, who is worthy to take and claim this book and to loose the seals. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Hallelujah. Revelations 5, 9. This book was what Adam and Eve forfeited at the Garden of Eden when they chose to partake with the tree of knowledge of good and evil rather than staying with the tree of life. The book contains the names of God's elect all through the ages, those who were chosen and predestined in Yeshua HaMashiach before the foundation of the world, according to Revelation 13.8, which are the direct subject of God's redemption. It is them also of which Romans 8.29.30 speaks about, for whom he did foreknew, he also did predestine, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, moreover who he did present, also then he also justified in whom he justified them, he also glorified. This, brothers and sisters, this book is also known as the Lamb's Book of Life. The prophet Daniel saw this book in his vision, but was told of God to seal it up, to seal it up until the end time, as we read in the following verses. But thou, O Daniel, close up the words and seal the book, even the time of the end. Many shall run to and forth, and knowledge shall be increased. And I heard, but I understood not. Then I said, O my Lord, what shall be in the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed 
till the time of the end. 12489. John and the mighty angel. John, the beloved, had seen and used in the book in the form of the seven thunders. And I saw the open book being delivered down to earth by the mighty angel of Revelation 10. Revelation 10, 1 to 4. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it was were the sun, and his feet were as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roars, and when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up these, which is the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. These seven angels from the prayer of God, revealing the hidden mysteries of the seven seals, which were sealed in the time of Daniel, to inform the people of God of the perfect will of the Father in preparation for the coming millennium reign of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach upon this earth. The seventh angel messenger. If we continue reading succeeding Revelation 10, 1 to 7, we will notice that the mighty angel, which was Michael, in the revelation of these messengers to the angel, which was the messenger of the Laodicean church age. The revelation of these mysteries continued in the seals to God's elect in these last days as clearly written in the seventh verse. Revelation 10, 7 states, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, all the mystery of God shall be finished as he has declared to his servants, the prophets. Below is an illustration of the seven messengers as they were sent from God to the seven church ages, according to Revelation 1, 20. The mystery of the seven stars in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven congregations. And the seven candlesticks, which thou saw, are the seven congregations. Yeshua told John to send this book to the seven churches, seven congregations in Asia. Revelation 1, 11. Revelation 1, verse 11. The taking away, or the second coming, or the rapture, as some people like to, of the Lord, comes in three stages. I'll repeat that. The second of our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, comes in three stages, according to 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. Number one, there has to be a shout, which is a message calling the people of God out from Babylon. Revelation 18, verse 4, and Matthew 25, 6, there has to be the voice of of the archangel. Three, there has to be the trumpet sounding. For the Lord himself should descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Yeshua HaMashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be with him forever and evermore. Amen. Hallelujah. What these seals contained. Here now is a, of what the mysteries, the seven seals contained. The first seal, the white horse rider. Revelation 6, 1. Revelation 6, verses 1 to 2 explain. The opening of the first seal. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder one of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he, he that sat on him had a bow, 
and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Take, take note that the first four seals, which involve events that already transpired within the time frame of Pentecost to our current day, are the announced by the four spiritual creatures. They're announced by four spiritual creatures of God. These creatures, number one, the lion, two, the cow, three, the face of a man, and four, the flying eagle. Revelation 4, 7 speaks of them. And first, beast was like a lion, and the second beast, like a cow, and the third beast, as a face of man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. God raised these beasts to contract the power of the four horse riders, which is Satan himself riding through the seven church ages. The first seal, the first seal talks about deception. Yes, the white horse symbolizes an in, impersonation of, of, of Christianity, of believers. Many Bible theologians throughout the ages taught that the white horse rider symbolizes the Holy Spirit coming forth to the congregation. But the revelation of the seventh angel proves them wrong. The white horse rider is Satan riding through with a false teaching in the irrigation through false prophets and false teachers to deceive the very elect of Yeshua HaMashiach, if it were possible. Matthew 24, 24. That just goes to show you that he's just a bluffer. He's a deceiver and a liar. Notice also that he was crowned. Crowning refers to the founding of the deeds of the Nicolonius, a force that brought hybrid doctrines and creeds injected into the false teachings. This was this occurred uh, when politics started to go into the congregation and wolves and sheep were invading from the congregation of God by teaching man made doctrines and the worship and the spirit and the gifts of spirit all which uh, pertain to true true fellowship of, of the saints were cast aside and men began to to fight for office and to fight for bishop and to fight for uh, you know fight for just like the, the Pharisees do there's no difference same spirit this was indeed a tragic evil as we read in the beginning of the message do not take off the word of God it's evident in his words in Revelation 2, 6. But this thou hast, hast, has the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. And I also, and also in Revelation 2, verse 15. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine, which thing I hate. So the Lord doesn't like when you take or add off his word. Just like all Israel is not Israel, so all believers are not believers. We learn that the church is made up of two vines. The congregation, the church, is made up of two vines, the true and the false. The two vines are motivated by two kinds of spirits. One has the Holy Spirit, while the other is, has the spirit of the Antichrist. Now, what does Antichrist mean? Antichrist means anti-word. So those false prophets came and, you know, taking off the word and changing everything, giving it a meaning that fits their own their own, uh, you know, devilish ends, I would say. Have you ever noticed how the people who lead others astray bind them so close by fear? They say that if the people don't do exactly what they say, they'll be, you know, destruction will follow them. They're false prophets because the true prophet will always lead one to the word of God and bind the people to the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, and he won't tell people to fear him He'll tell people to feel the word. And this is how you recognize a, 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 a truth or a false prophet. The whole, the whole time frame of the first seal refers to the ministry of the Apostle Paul when he started ministering unto the Gentiles. When they started the Ephesian church age, the white horse rider is none other than the Antichrist spirit bringing an impersonation of the truth, trying to deceive the very elect, if it were possible. This evil force of the white horse rider was, was combated by the lion spirit from God. Lion, which was the first beast, 
that announced the opening of the first seal, signifying boldness of the preaching of the gospel. This overpowering spirit was released through the Apostle Paul to contract the force of this white horse rider. It was evident that Paul was fearless in proclaiming the gospel. He rebuked and reproved all those who were claiming to be true believers but were fake. The boldness of Paul was evident in his preaching, such as at Galatians 1.8. But through, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel on, unto you than which we have preached, unto you let him be accursed. So this is the first seal, the second seal, the red horse rider. Revelation 6.4. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him. And he sat on the throne to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. The second seal revealed a red horse rider. It was the same rider, Satan himself, again, just changing horse from white to red. This was the next stage of Satan's trial. It was a fulfillment of prophecy where, and where believers will be persecuted for their faith, as it is written in Matthew 24, 9, which states, Then shall they, they deliver you up to be afflicted. They'll kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. The red horse symbolizes leading to the Holy Inquisition of Rome. It was a time when the Roman church began to persecute believers Millions of believers were burnt to the stake, fed to lions, tortured to death by the Roman Catholic Church. As recorded in history from the time of St. Augustine in 300 A.D. until 1850 A.D., 68 million believers have been killed by the Roman Catholic Church just because of disagreeing with their doctrine. This was the time when Satan rode the red horse to kill them all with the sword of affliction. The Nicolaitanian system moved on age. It is excommunicated. The righteous teachers can burn the scroll. The false church said it takes a special education to read and understand the word. Why, even Peter said that many things Paul wrote were hard to understand. Having taken away the word from the people, it soon came, people were listening only to what the priest had to say. And this is how it interjected into the uh, Church of Rome. The name Christian was originally brought, uh, the name Christian, which originally brought persecution, now became the name of the persecutors. It was in the age of, in the age of that Augustine of Hippo, 354 to 430, set forth the present that the church of Taurus came out. It was a time in 1850 that the great massacre of Ireland, and we see this also when the Protestants were killed by the Catholic Roman Church also. Yet while Satan through the Roman Church was destroying Christians during the Pergamon ages, its evil power was then contracted by God's higher standard, God's second beast, the calf, which is the spirit of beast burden, a beast of sacrifice. The saints during this time willingly gave their lives for the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach. And no matter what the cost was, it was given to the believers in that age that they should bear the Oleg spirit, to bear the burden of sacrifice till death. Though they were persecuted, tortured, burned to the stake, fed to lions, they still were courageous and were faithful until death, giving their lives gladly for the sake of the word of God. The red horse is driven by a blood-hungry devil. Hebrews 11, 36, 38 talks about the saints in this age. And others had trial of mockings and scourgings, you moreover of bonds, imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn. They were tempted, were slain with the sword. The third seal, the third seal, the black horse rider. Revelation 6, verses 5 and 6. And when he had opened the third seal, 
I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and behold, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of lanterns in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And though hurt not the oil and the wine. The third seal revealed the coming of the black horse rider. Satan was not not content with just persecuting the believers. Here he changed his horse again from red to black, introducing a new way of squeezing the lives of the believers during the succeeding ages, the Sanderheim, Philadelphia ages, uh, Philadelphian ages. Black is a color which signified the greed and abuse of the Roman Catholic Church. The Catholic Church began charging money, uh, you know, for, for souls. And this is where it symbolizes, uh, well, we come, this symbolizes the pair of lances the black horse rider was holding in his hand. The Roman Church began acquiring properties from the people in exchange for spiritual favors. The whole thing explains the phrase, a measure of wheat for a penny, a three measure of barley for a penny. The Roman church started to weigh the goods that she can get out of the people and made salvation very expensive. They turned religion into a big business and were teaching creeds out of man's ideas instead of the pure Bible. They taught that the people can only be saved by works and obedience to the Catholic church rather than believing by faith in the Word of God. This, by the way, is the same thing that the Orthodox Jew rabbis do in Israel. They say, you have to believe in us. We have the power. You can't understand the Word of God. It's the same thing, the same spirit. The wheel there, uh, yes, in this age, God's people cannot be defeated. God raised up, again, the standards of the true believers by giving them out a spirit of a man. Man is gifted with wisdom and knowledge. Man is smart. And so this age started the age of the reforms. It was the age of the Reformation. An open door was set by God before the believers in the age to evangelize the whole world with the truth of the Bible. Revelation 3.8 states, Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength. And hath kept my word and has not denied my name. The fourth seal, the pale horse rider. Revelation 6, verses 7 and 8. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I look and behold the pale horse. And in his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with a sword and with hunger and with death and with beasts of the earth. The fourth seal revealed a pale horse rider. This is the final ride of Satan during the seven Gentile church ages. The color pale is nothing but a mixture of white, red, and black. It is combined forces of power of Satan mixing White, deception, red, persecution, black, spiritual, spiritual famine, into one, the Antichrist, turned into a false prophet, riding his last trial. His final stage of leading his people to the mark of the beast, which is happening now in our age. Notice that death and hell followed him. This speaks of both natural and spiritual death. To receive her teachings... And creed means death, eternal separation from God. Sword, hunger, and death are what brings the people today in his final ride, a true fulfillment of Matthew 24, 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and earthquakes and divers and places. The pale horse rider is riding in our age right now. We are in the end times controlling politics, military, economics, religion. He is the prince of the power of the air, Ephesians 6, 12 states. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, 
against power, against rulers of darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. High places means governments, nations, and kingdoms. But God cannot be defeated by Satan. God in this last age has raised his standards, hallelujah, once again, by giving his people the power to overcome the evil of the pale horse rider. God gave the believers of this age the power of the flying eagle, the spirit of prophetic honors, the spirit of captability given to today's believers to dig deep down on the true revelations of God, to, to understand the deep mysteries of the Bible until one is filled with the Holy Ghost and ready for the catching away or the rapture, if you want to call it. This is our age. This is the eagle age. The fifth seal, souls under the altars. And I want you to write this down because this is uh, an amazing revelation. The fifth seal is souls under the altar. Now, what does that mean? Revelation 6.11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does now not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on earth. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that shall be killed as they were should be fulfilled. The fifth seal reveals the souls under the altar. These were the Jews that died under the cruelty of Hitler, Mussolini, the Jewish Holocaust. We can read in these verses that they were asking for revenge and were crying for the vengeance against the cruelty which they received from those dictators when they were killed, tortured in gas chambers and firing lines. Yes, yes, they held on the law, the law of Moses, which was the word of God for them. And for the testimony which they held as being Jews, they were killed and martyred, and they, were, and they are the souls under the altar. But it was promised unto them to wait for a little while for the two prophets of Revelation chapter 11 to call out their fellow brethren, the 144,000 Jews that have been called to Judaism, to the true gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach, during the tribulation period, before God could avenge their blood against them that killed them. The final vengeance will take place during the Armageddon War, when God shall fight for Israel and the remnant Jews against Gog and Magog, Russia, Iran, and the Arabs, who will attack Israel along with the great whore and her daughter, comes World War III, Revelations 19, verses 11 to 16. The sixth seal, tribulation period. Revelation 6, 12 to 17. Revelation 6, verses 12 to 17. And behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black, scat cloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree cast her fig. When she is shaken, of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens, in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him, who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? The sixth seal is threefold. First, it is the tribulation period, the purging of, na- of, of nature, earthquakes, volcano, nuclear weapons, will, will be all over the earth in preparation for the coming millennial reign of Yeshua HaMashiach. Second Peter Chapter 3, verses 10 to 12. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heaven shall pass away 
with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with heat, the earth also, and the works shall be burned up. Heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The righteous shall walk upon the ashes of the wicked after that. Secondarily, it will be the purging time for the foolish virgins of Matthew 25. The foolish virgins are those who are left behind, missing the taking away. They miss the rapture. They miss the heed. This end time message and were divided of the oil or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why they were left behind, weeping, wailing, and gnashing of their teeth. They will be hunted down like dogs by the Antichrist and will be tortured to death during the tribulation period. They have to shed their blood in order to attain their salvation. I'll repeat that. They have to shed their blood in order to attain their salvation. Brothers and sisters, that's what the Word of God says. Thirdly, it will be the calling of the 144,000 Israel back to the true gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach. When God is through with us, when God is through with the Gentiles, he will turn back to the Jews and open their eyes to the true gospel of salvation. God will send his two prophets, the two olive trees of Revelation 11, to call upon the elect of Israel. Yeshua will be preached to them, and they will accept him as their Messiah. This event will be like that of Joseph revealing himself again to his brethren, yet in scared hands while they wail in sackcloth with tears in their eyes, realizing that it was Yeshua HaMashiach, that he's their real Messiah. The seventh seal, the seventh seal, the coming of the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, Revelation 8, 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. The seventh sealed book is revealed at the time of the seven thunders of Revelation 10, the breach. Thus we can say that Revelation 10 is the seventh seal. Revelation 10, 7, two things will happen. Revelation 10, 7, two things must happen. One, according to Malachi 4, he will turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. Two, the mysteries of the seven, seven thunders in Revelation 10, which are the revelations continued in the seven seals. It will be these divinely revealed mystery truths that turn the hearts of the children, the Laodicean age, chapter Nine. The seven thunders are the mysteries contained in the seven seals. There are the mystery truths. This will bring amazing faith to the congregation. The seven seals were just coverings of the book side contained within those seals were the seven thunders, as you have read them above. We can then conclude that the first thunder mystery was the white horse rider. Who was, who was this white horse rider? Now we know. The second thunder mystery was the red horse rider. The third thunder mystery was the pale horse rider. The fifth thunder mystery was the souls under the altar. And the sixth thunder mystery was the tribulation period. And the seventh thunder mystery was the coming of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach in three stages, the shout, the voice, and the trumpet. Spiritually knowing these mysteries will then give you a rapturing faith as we obey and live out the manifested word of God in our day. The seventh seal is a time spoken also in Luke 17.30. In the days when the Son of Man is revealed again, the Son of Man came down to minister to his bride on earth. Then, and only then, can the rapture, the taken away, take place. When the last name in the book is declared on this earth, Yeshua is still in his mercy time. It's not yet over until that last elected seed comes in to the fold. 
You may be that last one, brothers and sisters. You may be that last one. Don't miss the, the taken away, my friends. Recognize this day as the end time and be counted worthy to be called the bride of Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai. Let's pray. Avinu Sheba Shamayim Adon Olam. Heavenly Father, Lord Yeshua, thank you. Thank you for revealing the mysteries of the Word of God to us, Father, through the Holy Spirit. Father, we look up. We look up and we know that you're coming with the cloud. Daniel 7.13. And I saw one coming with the clouds like the Son of Man. We look for this time, Father, where we'll be caught up in the air to be with you forever and evermore, Father. Father, we live in this world, but we are not of this world. Help us, Father, to obey your word and to walk in your light and to be a light to the dark world. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamorid et Ruach HaKodesh al Pnei HaOlam. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai Baruch Hu Amen. Blessed be the name of Yeshua forever and evermore. Amen. We thank you so much for being with us, and I'll turn the mic back over to Miss Christina Micas, our world-famous producer and co-host. Wow, a pretty intense, Deb. Um, I do have a couple of questions, though, that I'd like to clarify, and <laughs> maybe some of the audience does, too. Um, <laughs> when we talk about the tribulation and the tick catching up, <laughs> prior to the tribulation, <laughs> the catching up has occurred? Has the catching up occurred prior to the tribulation period? Absolutely. The bride of Yeshua HaMashiach will be <laughs> caught up. And then there's a tribulation, absolutely. So, you know, many times I I get emails from people saying, you know, we have a big warehouse in in Kenya and a big warehouse in in Australia, and we're we're saving up, you know, for the the tribulation period. And I say, brothers and sisters in Yeshua HaMashiach, if you're part of that bride, you're not going to be here in the tribulation. The five five wise virgins and, and, and the five foolish virgins, the door was shut. That door is shut. The tribulation of three and a half years begins, and the, and, and the ones who are left behind, those foolish virgins, they are not going to have a picnic here, as we just read. No, there's going to be famine, pestilence, death, you know, wars. Um, it's going to be very ugly. At one point, I think it's the, a quarter of the world, uh, Satan is allowed to take a quarter of the world, you're talking about roughly, you know, two billion people all well, at one time. Says, so, you know, we have to add there's going to be major disasters, major earthquakes, as as we just read. Nuclear, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So, Zev, then the, um, so then God will be calling forth 144,000 Jews. Is that 12 from each tribe? Yes, yes. But we'll do a teaching on that next time. Okay. I, mean, I would encourage I would encourage uh, our listeners, if anybody has any questions, first of all, I would encourage you to take your Bibles and notes and listen to this teaching again and again. It will be on our archives. And write down the Scripture. Seek the revelation for God. Don't take my word for it. I'm just a man. We're small people with a big God. What I just taught was, was revealed to me from, you know, it, it's in the Word of God. It was revealed to us by a prophet, as it says in Malachi 4, and, and you know what? And and just seek the true word of God. You know, don't miss the rapture. Don't miss the word rapture is not in the Bible. I use the it's a taken away, but I use rapture just to let people understand. But I want to make it clear that the word rapture is not a biblical word. Well, it says it's taken away. We meet the Lord in the air. So just mm-hmm. recognize the day. It's the end time. Be counted worthy to be called the bride of Yeshua Hamashiach. Mm-hmm. So the you know, two witnesses, right the two witnesses right that have come on the scene during the tribulation period, during the first three and a half years. Right, right, right. And, and you Correct. know, I, many people are very, uh, very, um, 
worried about the situation in the world right now. We see what's going on in, in Russia and Ukraine and, and with the uh, United States. It's exactly what the Bible says. We're in that, we're in that last age. What is, whatever is happening right now is supposed to be happening. You know, we should say hallelujah because redemption is near. Yeshua is coming. You know, rejoice, rejoice. Just don't miss that rapture, friends. Now, have that oil in your lamp because, you know, we're doing these teachings because the Spirit of God has revealed to us that it is time. It's time for us to do these teachings. And we really hope that, you know, as Ev said, that you guys will take out your Bibles. Listen to this teaching over and over. Write down the scriptures and seek the revelation of the Spirit because it, time is short and it's very important that we understand the true revelation, the true book of revelation and what God has in short. Again, as Zeb just said, everything that's happening today is part of God's plan. So his people should not be in fear. They should be in excited anticipation of what is to come. And if you're truly one of God's people, God will always prepare you. He lets you know and he prepares you. He's preparing us now. I don't want to get into the whole thing today about blood moons, but I would suggest you all look into, you know, the listeners look into the blood moons. There's some very significant things happening with that during um, Passover this year and Rosh Hashanah this year and Passover next year and Rosh Hashanah next year. And it's very unusual to have the four consecutive blood moons. So without getting into that whole teaching, because that's another whole teaching. <laughs> Anyways, but I just, there's I just many make... signs that God is giving us today. Isn't that right, Zeb, that we can look at and see that God is trying to show his people, look look to the signs. I gave you the signs. Look to them. Absolutely. As I said in the beginning of the teaching, uh, I give you a, a blessed challenge to to love your Bible, and if you love your Bible, we love you, Shua Mashiach, and seek that revelation. The message is, for the, the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. So just listen to the Word of God, and uh, again, don't miss the rapture. Don't be, don't be worried about what's going on in the world right now. The world is, is coming to an end. Disaster mm-hmm. everywhere. It's not going to get better. Yeshua is coming back. Search for that oil. Don't mm-hmm. look anywhere. You're not going to find it on Fox News. You're not going to find it on CNN. You're not going to find it anywhere else except in the Word of God. When I get emails from people and they tell me, oh, you know, we're having disaster. What are we going to do? What are you going to do? Look in your Bible. Don't miss the rapture. Don't <laughs> miss the end time message. Be worthy to be called the bride of Yeshua Mashiach. That's what I tell them. Amen. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, this word is being preached in so many uh, areas now, in so many places. I know yesterday I was listening, and I think every single person I listened to was referring to the end times. God is telling his people, it's harvest time. It's time to wake up. It's time to get yourself prepared. Time is short. It is really short, and it's going so fast when you look at what's happening in the Middle East. You look at what's happening with Russia. You look at how all of these things that God has shared with us and spoken through his word, you see what's happening. All the countries that God speaks of in his word are the countries that are involved. I don't care if it's Iran, Libya, Turkey, uh, Kush, Ethiopia, all of these places, and Russia, Germany, the tribe of Dan, they will all be involved. And we, what do we see today as it's all happening? It's unfolding before our eyes, and so we really have to study ourselves approved so that we can rightly divide the word of God and let the spirit confirm in your spirit what is truth. Amen, amen. I want to encourage you also to visit our website, messiahofisraelministries.org. Sign up to get our newsletter of evangelistic evangelistic things that are happening here in Israel. Send us your prayer request. We pray in Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, every, at least every 10 days. We'd love to hear from you. And pray also for us, and pray for the peace of Jerusalem also. We need your prayer as we are ministering and sharing the gospel of Yeshua Mashiach daily here in Israel. 
Blessed are those who are persecuted for Yeshua's name, but we need the prayer. So pray pray for us, pray with us, and we'd love to hear from you. And next week we'll be talking about Operation Jericho in Israel and United States, what's happening with that. And if you don't know what Operation Jericho is, then uh, tune in next week and you'll find out. And also we'll be talking about evangelism here in Israel and what the Lord has been doing, mighty things here in Israel in these end times. Before that veil is lifted up from Israel, the things are happening right now as we are living in the end times. So I want to thank our world-famous producer, Ms. Christina. Deb, in the end times, doesn't the, um, the, the, the outpouring of the Spirit become more intense so that more, more people become aware? And I know a lot of people say, and they'll prophesy, and they'll do this. Um, that comes during this end time period or during the period of tri- tribulation? We'll do a teaching on that next time. You know, I can't just answer that in a nutshell. We have okay. To go through the <laughs> I'm trying to take you somewhere. <laughs> it's okay. Well, listeners, we just want to really thank you today for joining us on this exciting teaching. I mean, this I can't encourage you enough to listen to it over and over. I know I'm going to to where it really you know drops into my spirit and then study, study, study the scriptures. Um, I've been studying the Revelation scriptures for days now, and it's, God is really revealing. The more you get into the Word, the more will be revealed to you. If you see, God will allow you to find. And um, again, join us next week, uh, March 24th, for uh, a great show about <clears throat> the supernatural things that God's doing in Israel through Zeb's ministry, Messiah of Israel Ministries. And uh, we just thank you so much for joining us today. Be sure to visit his website at messiahofisraelministries.org. You don't want to miss a moment of what God is doing. Don't worry about what Fox is doing, as Dev said, or CNN. Worry about what God is doing. So I just want to thank you all and look forward to um, having you join us again next week. Blessings, Zev. Thank you, Miss uh, Christina, and blessings to our listeners that are listening live and the ones that will be listening also in the future. And shalom from Israel. And keep on looking up. Yeshua is coming. And he's coming soon, so get ready. Get that oil in your lamp. God bless all. Shalom, Zev. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. Okay.